unsolved crimes newspaper as a response to Cavalier civil society organization within the framework of a struggle against religious extremism presents. But we recognize that freedom of religion is more than just a church state question. It's a question of advancing conversation and dialogue in the world. Joseph Grybowski, President and CEO of Grybowski Global Strategies. Founder and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Nobel Peace Prize nominated Institute on Religion and Public Policy. You write in your article that the classification of religious group into the religion and the sect is a violation of human rights. Article 18 of the International Government on Civil and Political Rights. But to whom it may be beneficial? Dividing groups into, into what are considered dangerous sects and cults only serves to promote the interests of particular organizations and for that matter other religions. Um, in a, in a post 9-11 world where interfaith dialogue and interfaith communication and religious freedom become fundamentally more important to divide groups rather than build them, to, um, to split groups up rather than building bridges, only serves to undermine an attempt at building peace and security. FACRIS is uh, the European Federation uh, of Centers uh, for Research and uh, Exchange of Information on Sex. Most of the experts uh, regard uh, activities uh, of some it, of its uh, members as uh, illegitimate ones. What do you think in this regard? FACRIS has, has very interestingly adopted the model of, of minority faiths in gaining access to groups like the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, the European Union and other institutions in an attempt to try and make their activities legitimate. Um, FECRIS's activities are not legitimate, they undermine public security, they undermine fundamental rights and they undermine uh, human dignity and civility. USA is a such a democracy-loving country. How come FACRIS has a branch over there? We've, we've seen a rise in religious discrimination in the United States. In fact, the, the presumptive nominee of one of our two political parties is himself a racist, a xenophobe, and an Islamophobe. Um, as we see this kind of, of um, this kind of, of religious discrimination grow in the United States, it's, it's possible for FECRIS to gain ground. However, the United States is built on the premise of freedom of religion. It's built on the premise of religious tolerance. It's built on the premise of religious respect. While FECRIS may have a branch, it will never grow and it will never truly gain influence. Would you mind sharing your views uh, in regard to anti-sectarian movements? We have, we have worked with, with coalitions of religious organizations for decades, um, helping to highlight the fact that anti-sectarian groups are not limited to what the general perception believes is, is a sectarian group. Um, I look at, at um, uh, Mivaloots in France, um, the, a French government agency, an interministerial commission, has regularly raided Roman Catholic churches. Uh, they include the Southern Baptists on their uh, their black lists of sects and cults. When when Mills, its predecessor, uh, was in existence, the then president and vice president of the United States would be considered members of a dangerous sect and cult. Um, so we've worked quite a bit over the years to raise awareness of the fact that without a, a standard measure of, of methodology, without standards by which to determine what actions, not what beliefs, lead to, to criminal activity, then otherwise one is simply um, criminalizing one's thinking and not criminalizing one's actions. Alexander Dvorkin, vice president of FACRIS, activity is regarded by a number of experts from Europe and Russia, in general as an extremist one. How would you comment this kind of attitude? 
Honestly, I, I think the only term I could use to describe uh, Alexander Dvorkin's activities is insane. Um, it, just watch him at OSCE meetings. He'll walk down a hallway talking to himself. He accuses religious organizations of being extremist because they don't support uh, divorce. Well, neither is the Roman Catholic Church. Um, you know, Dvorkin has no um, no educational background, no expertise, no no basis for his rants. They're simply um, they're simply the ramblings of an angry, insane man. Do you know him personally? I had requested a meeting with him maybe 15 years ago, and he uh, angrily denied the meeting. I was at the same conference that he was. Uh, in Greece in 2004, I believe it was. And at that conference, I gave a speech on the importance of religious freedom for democracy and security. Well, unknown to me, the organizers of the conference gave Dvorkin an advanced copy of my text and then spent the next 30 minutes attacking me um, and attacking the United States. Uh, then after the uh, after the event that evening, that afternoon in the evening at a dinner, he um, uh, came up to me at the dinner table, began screaming, and then walked away. I, as you can imagine, was embarrassed as I was in the presence of uh, members of the diplomatic corps in Greece. He then came back again and started uh, saying, well, now I know you're going to destroy me. Now I know that you're going to come after me. And my only response was, you're not important enough for me to come after you. And he was so insulted by that that he stormed away. Uh, I then saw him again at an, an OSCE conference uh, where we did not engage, but that's where I said he was walking down the, the hallway, uh, speaking to himself and, and looking rather, well, crazy. Is he regarded to be a respected person in USA? Absolutely not. Anyone who works in the religious freedom field, in the interfaith dialogue field, in anything engaged, engaged with religion, if they even know him, first of all, uh, he's not a well-known entity. But those who do know who he is consider him a fringe and, and um, uh, unreliable extremist. Do you think uh, that factors and activities uh, of ones like Dworkin uh, pose a danger for an international community? I absolutely believe that the actions of people like Dworkin and organizations like Fekris, um that they are a threat to the international community. Um, they, they undermine civility, they undermine social engagement. Uh, in a world where we see rising extremism against Muslims, in a world where we see rising extremism against, in, uh, against minorities of all kind, uh, communities need to build engagement, not tear it down. And what FECRIS does is spreads um, insecurity, it spreads lies, it spreads um, um, xenophobia, and if we're trying to, to, to deal with a Syrian refugee crisis, organizations like FECRIS will only serve to put the lives of refugees at risk. Yesterday in our interview with uh, Dr. James Richardson, uh, he said uh, that Dworkin is a big mistake of Russian Orthodox Church. What do you think in this regard? Dworkin likes to regularly state that he is not directly affiliated with the Russian Orthodox Church. Let's assume that that is correct. If Even if he's not affiliated, the actions that he takes undermines the perception of the Russian Orthodox Church. It, it serves to paint the church as um, both scared and weak, rather than as being a, a strong social player within Russian civil society. And it serves to... to um, paint a very negative picture of orthodox leadership. I have enough of a problem with state agencies like Mivaluds or the Russian police raiding, um, raiding houses of worship. But when a non-governmental organization, a civil society organization like FECRIS, takes it upon itself to engage in extrajudicial, extra-governmental authority, that is a fundamental violation of law on any number of levels, 
not to mention violations of internationally recognized human rights. Why do you think uh, this type uh, of policy is a destructive one, as uh, for democracy and uh, as for a business environment? If an organization, uh, a, a duly registered, legally um, uh, incorporated business, is being raided because its, uh, its CEO or its owner holds a particular religious worldview, there is no better definition of a violation of fundamental rights. But now you're not just violating personal religious rights, you're violating corporate rights. Um, the Chinese have always been the best example of what's wrong with that. And so the Chinese will raid Falun Gong owned businesses. Now, by the way, let it not be lost that Alexander Dvorkin has advised the Chinese government on how to attack Falun Gong. Um, something that we need to remember that Dvorkin does have influence outside of, of Russia. Um, but if, if a business does not, uh, it cannot be comfortable or stable in knowing that its activities will not be hindered um, simply because of the, the beliefs of its, of its owner, um, then where, what in society is stable? If business contracts can't be upheld because one person happens to be a member of a religion that Mifle, that uh, that Fekris doesn't like, well, what what laws are um, what laws are legitimate and what laws laws will be upheld? Every community is at threat then, not just a person, not just the the religious community they belong to, but also the corporate community. What do you think is the most effective strategy? Is there is an attack, an active and tolerant attitude, or active defense counter attack? My my personal opinion is that it, um, when when an individual or a company comes under attack, the best option is uh, a multi level strategy. One is a lawsuit. Begin there. That it's a violation of law to be to have your institution raided, um, even if it's being raided by the police. The second is to take an active uh, public relations stand, put out a press release, do interviews, uh, take to social media. The wonderful thing about Facebook and Twitter is that nothing is is nothing is private any longer. And um, you know, if a person is being attacked because of what they believe, not because they violated the law, not because they they physically harmed someone, not because of anything other than what they believe, then take to social media and make the case. Um, especially when there's such overwhelming evidence against people like Vorkin and Fekris. We would be glad to hear your wishes about our project where you take part in. I think it's important for there to be a, a public display of, of all of the evidence committed against um, people and institutions by Fekris. Um, You know, in a, it, as I said in a response to a previous question, in the 21st century we live in an age of information. Um, it's important though that, that the information that's out be information that's valid, verifiable, reliable and true. And, and FECRIS is not known for doing that. Uh, and so wherever an institution can help to raise the, the, the awareness that groups like FECRIS undermine civil society, they undermine the social stability, and they undermine um, uh, democratic principles, then that's a fundamentally important project.